Okay. Let's do this. Speaking of being outside, you have to worry about ticks, and we are in tick season. And experts, they are expecting it to be worse than last year. So what can we do to protect ourselves and our pets, and what do we need to know about this year and what makes it different? Nicole, thank you for being with us. Uh, I was in the office saying, are we having the tick lady on? Is that a bad thing to call you? I mean, you just call me by my name, Nicole. <laughs> okay, Nicole, I'll go with Nicole. <laughs> but you know a lot about ticks. Uh, there's a tick research lab at East Stroudsburg University, and that's where you are? Yes, East Stroudsburg University, the tick research lab. Okay, well, let's get into this. You know what you're talking about. Uh, I hear that it could be one of the worst tick seasons in a long time. Why would that be? So there's a lot of factors that play into the ticks emerging from the winter months. And one of those factors is snow coverage. And we had some good snow coverage this year. And that actually helps the ticks to, to survive through the winter months because it keeps them moist. So in the springtime, we saw a lot of ticks emerge and a lot of tick bites. Okay. And that's interesting because usually you don't think about ticks in the winter. So they're just hiding out and waiting and then they emerge. Yep, they're underneath of the leaf litter and the snow coverage, uh, just waiting until the spring months come. There's... So now that we know there's going to be more of them, where do we usually see them more in our area? And what kind are they? So there, Pennsylvania has a lot of different types of ticks, but there's the three common ones that we'll see the most attached to humans and animals, and that's your black-legged deer tick, your lone star tick, and your American dog tick. And common areas are cool, moist areas, so edges of the forest, um, underneath the leaf litter, um, edges of your backyard, areas like that. Um, but also unexpected areas, too. The beach, the shore? So, yeah, it's not actually unexpected. So ticks like high grass. So the areas of the dunes oh. that have that high grass area, um, ticks will survive there, and they'll uh, extract the moisture from the sea um, to survive. So, okay. like, by the dunes? Yeah, by the dunes. Okay. Um, well, they're dangerous. I mean, it's Lyme disease is a very, very bad thing. How, what's your way of removing a tick once it's in your hair or on your skin, someplace? Tweezers, what do you use? Yeah, so removing a tick is one of the most important things if you're exposed. Uh, you want to use a fine point tweezer or one of the tick removal tools, grabbing at the base of the mouth part and pulling straight up and out. Avoid using anything like alcohol where the tick would easily back out because that actually puts you at greater risk of a disease transmitting. And it's, you place it in a plastic bag. I just can't throw it down the toilet or something? No, you will always want to save the tick. Uh, oh. For Pennsylvania residents, we do free tick testing. We also test out-of-state residents' ticks. So save the tick, put it in a plastic bag because that tick can give you a lot of important information of what you've been exposed to if symptoms do emerge. Well, and that's the thing. What yeah. are some of the what symptoms that would emerge so it does vary um, between different tick-borne illnesses because it's not just Lyme disease. There's also other pathogens, um, but your fever, chills, headaches are going to be the common symptoms that um, when your immune system kicks up that can, you'll see. How and then we've also seen some other ones really quickly because yeah. a rash resembling a bullseye mark. Yeah, the rash isn't as common anymore okay. with the bullseye rash. Um, Pennsylvania residents, less than 50% who have Lyme disease will actually have that uh, telltale bullseye rash. Huh. You may see multiple rashes, and the rash won't always appear at the site of the bite. Uh, interesting. Uh, how bad can Lyme disease, can it kill you? Um, Lyme disease can be very serious and debilitating, uh, especially if it's left untreated or undiagnosed for a significant amount of time. Wow. And how can we prevent it? If we still want to go out and enjoy and be worry-free, what can we do? Cover up. <laughs> Absolutely. So there's tick repellents out there that you can use versus, versus, uh, both natural and the chemical options. You can wear light color clothing so that you can see them. But the best way to prevent them is to constantly do a tick check when you come inside from being outdoors and shower within a few hours. Do they go to a certain part of the body more than other, like your hair or your crotch or something? Right. Yeah, so they tend to be in areas that are warm and moist, so armpits, midsection, hairline, um, areas where there's thin skin so that they can attach. Okay, well, that's good to know. Nicole, how did you ever get into this business? You know, we do a lot of different research on um, different uh, wildlife diseases, so this is something that's needed. And sure uh, the Pennsylvania residents through the Department of Health are receiving pre tick testing. Well, you're great, and uh, thank you for work. your hard work. My goodness. Look, there are the four types of ticks she was talking about. Most common, I guess. Is the Lone Star tick from Texas? That's where it originally originated, when and then it has uh, yeah, moved up north. Yeah. Nicole, thanks. Thank you. Yeah.